Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Sarah and I make stuff. For today's project, we will be doing another stained glass piece. So if you've seen any of my previous videos, you will know that I am a stained glass artist. I make stained glass. I've made a couple other videos of stained glass stuff, but today's is a little bit special. We are making one of my most favorite things, which is putting dried flowers and plants between two pieces of glass and soldering it shut to keep them nice and beautiful forever. Like I said, this is one of my favorite things to make, but when I first started out, <laughs> I really, I couldn't find any information on how to do it. Like zero. I had to figure it out from like studying other people's pictures and like taking knowledge that I knew about stained glass and twisting it to sort of fit this. Um, and I don't know if people are being secretive about it. I didn't know if it was just like a new thing that no one had made a tutorial about, but I am here to show you how to do it so you can do it and make beautiful things. So here's an example of one I made late last year with some maple leaves. You can see it without glitter. They're super pretty. You can do them with just about any dried flower or plant that is very, very flat. You don't want to do this with anything that has a thick stem or like a thick flower bud because it will not press easily in the glass. Yeah. As always, if you like my stained glass tutorials or my other craft projects, please subscribe to my channel. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, or if you try this project, leave a comment down below, tag me in social media, everything is linked. Um, let's go over the supplies you will need for this project. So the first thing you'll need is glass. How I personally do it is I buy just plain clear window glass from the hardware store because it's a lot thinner than like stained glass sheets and we'll be doubling up the glass so it is less bulky that way. With that being said, because this window glass is thinner, it tends to splinter more and is a little bit more dangerous. You also are more likely to break your pieces as you're cutting them because you're putting too much pressure. So I've already cut out these two, I don't, you can't even see those, two little star shaped pieces of glass and we're gonna be sandwiching them. When you cut them, you're gonna wanna make sure that they fit together pretty evenly. Otherwise you'll be able to see gaps and stuff in the foil that you can fill with solder, but it gets like a little bit tricky. So now that we have glass, we obviously need something to put between the glass. So you'll wanna find either dried flowers or leaves. And there are a lot of different places you can find them. I like to buy these packs off Etsy for, they're like two bucks each. I can link the shop where I get them below. And they come in a bunch of different colors, but you end up with like, this lavender is too thick. That won't work. So it's sort of like hit or miss on what you can actually use. <laughs> I also have my copy of Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy with all of my pressed flowers from my garden. Like here's a really pretty hibiscus I pressed. This is really nice because you can pick the flowers you know will be very flat and pretty. The downside is you don't really know what their color is gonna end up looking like because when you try them or press them, sometimes they change colors. Like that hibiscus I just showed you was like hot pink when I picked it and when I dried it, it turned like a dark purple. So if you are going to get into pressed flowers, I suggest you get one of these. This is called a microfleur and it is a flower press that dries your flowers in the microwave in like 30 seconds. The next thing you'll need is copper foil to hold your two pieces of glass together and for the solder to stick to. Here is my little container of all my different types of foil. For this, I'm going to be using half inch silver back copper foil. The reason I use foil that's this uh, width is because when you're holding the two pieces of glass together, trying to get the flowers not to fall out and then trying to foil it, the thicker it is, like the more grip it'll have on your glass. And it just makes everything a lot easier. Once I foil it, if the copper foil is too thick on some sides, I'll take my X-Acto knife and I'll cut it back and I'll show you when I do that. But that really gives you a lot of 
wiggle room when making your pieces and you can really dictate how they look and I think I think that's really cool. Okay the next item you don't need but it will make your life 100% easier. So they are these little plastic clips <laughs> and you get a box of like a hundred of them. I have no idea how many are in here. They're like seven bucks on Amazon and I use these for just about every craft project as you can see they're all glued together but I use these for everything I use them for sewing I use them when I'm making foam stuff I use them in stained glass I use them for everything these are amazing even if you're not doing this project you should buy these clips I'm just kidding. so the next kind of group of items you'll need are your soldering supplies which if you want to go back and watch my how to stained glass supply video I go over soldering iron, flux, different types of solder, all that in more detail. And I'm just gonna like briefly go over them here, but I will link some of the stuff below. So if you wanna go buy it, you can. So the soldering supplies you'll need is your soldering iron, which mine's really big and it's sitting behind me and I'll get it out in a second when I actually do my demonstration. But you will also need flux. This tells the solder where to stick, so you're going to paint this onto your copper foil and the solder is going to melt over it and stick. You will also need your solder. Um, I'm using 6040 lead solder for this. If you are making a piece of jewelry, please use lead-free solder because you do not want lead sitting on your skin. I also have an assortment of jump rings, which you've seen this in all of my videos. I buy these. I buy these multi-packs like every couple of months because I use them for literally everything. A couple other things you might want is a heat resistant soldering mat, which again, I'll show you in a second. You might want some Windex to clean your glass because you want to make sure it's super, super clean before you seal everything in. And possibly a pair of tweezers to hold your jump ring in place while you solder. One more optional thing that you could get if you really wanted to if you are going to continue to make stained glass things is a bottle of polish this will just make sure your solder is extra shiny and pretty and it ha leaves like a protective wax coating so it sort of protects it from um oxidizing a little bit okay i'm going to clear off my little workspace and drop my camera down and we are first going to foil up this thing and trim it and then we will solder it so Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is spray a little bit of Windex onto a paper towel. And I have these sandwiched in the shape that I want them, so I'm just gonna take it. And open them like that so when I'm done, I can just flip this one back onto here and it'll be good to go. I like to do this before I sandwich them just to make sure there are no fingerprints in there that will show up after it is sealed up where I cannot fix it. Okay, now is the most fun part and we're going to pick out our flowers to put in here. So I like to start with a big piece of greenery typically, just so I can get sort of a shape going. When you are happy with your flower placement, you can take your other piece of glass and very carefully place it on top. And now this is where these clips really, really, really come in handy. Carefully pick it up. And I like to go around and clip 
everything into place so nothing shifts around. I do have to give you a word of warning. If you're using a very large piece of glass and you have something um, thick in your glass and you put pressure on the edges, it could crack your glass. So this project is better to do with either smaller pieces of glass or very, very, very thin things. Like you don't wanna put anything that has a thick stem into a big piece of glass. And there we, there is my piece all clipped together. I usually like to give it a little shake to see if anything falls out. That way I know nothing will move once I foil it. So there's that. Move all my stuff out of the way. Move my flowers. Now I am going to foil it. So I like to hold my foil between my thumb and my fingers using this one to press and I get a little tail. And we're gonna start here. So you're gonna try and center that sandwich glass as close as you can. Oh, I gotta cramp in my hand. And this is hard because I like to keep a lot of pressure on this hand as I foil. Oh. As I foil, just to make sure that that foil is really sandwiching it together. Keep the foil centered. Remove those clips as you get to them. And typically, if I'm foiling a piece, I will wait to fold over the edges until I'm done. But with this, I like to do it as I go, just so it really like holds all the pieces together. I'll take that one. And this process will take some practice. It is hard on the hands. It, it takes some practice. <laughs> And don't worry if your foil is a little bit uneven, we are going to go back and trim it at the end, which is why I use foil that's thicker than it needs to be. I like to overlap about a quarter of an inch, half an inch trim. And that is our foiled star. It looks a mess right now. We're gonna clean it up. So if you have a fid tool, you can use whatever you want to press down your foil to make sure it's super stuck. I like to do the outside edges first make sure I have like a really good seal. I would also like to say that I chose a really difficult shape for this. Um, any kind of square or rectangle is gonna be the easiest, um, especially when you're soldering. Circles are also pretty easy, but they're a little bit harder to solder the edges. So start with something super easy if you haven't done this before. Now, I'm just going around pressing down all of that foil on the edges to create a really, really tight adhesion. Flip it over and do the other side. a little bit cleaner now that I've pressed it down but we still have a lot of spaces where it's uneven so I'm going to go in with my exacto knife 
and just clean it up so it's the same thickness all the way around. Another thing I like to do with this step is because I did inward curves, the foils split a little bit and I like to go back and cover that so you get a really, really clean seam. Another important decision to make is which side is your front and which side is your back. So this will be my front because this side has the back of all the flowers. So when you look through the front, you can sort of see the foil from the other side peeking through and we want to cut all that back so you don't see that silver in there. It doesn't matter as much with the back, but that's just my personal preference. You don't have to do that. Do what you want. So I like to look and I can see it there. So I know I'm going to cut it back there. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that. So now let me get my soldering set up and we will finish this up. Always wear your safety glasses and do this in a super well ventilated area and with a fume extractor if you have one. Um, I like to solder outside when the weather's nice just so I don't have to deal with it. I have an open window over there and I have two open doors on either side of me. So turning my soldering iron on to heat up and I wear gloves when I solder to keep lead off my hands and flux off of my hands but I'm gonna make a whole video about stained glass safety because I realize that I haven't really gone over it in past videos and it's super important so you don't get lead poisoning so I have my star here and the first thing we're gonna do is take our flux. So this is here. I keep it in this with a little brush and you need like the smallest amount. And you're gonna really carefully brush that onto the copper foil. And I like to do one side at a time as I solder it just so the solder isn't tempted to run all over the place. I'm gonna take my solder and get a good piece out on my very hot solder iron. I'm gonna get a little bead and I'm just gonna tap it. And the reason I tap is so I get a nice thick layer of solder on there. And another note, if you're using thin glass like this, you're not gonna wanna hold your soldering iron onto the piece for very long because since this glass is thinner, it'll heat up quicker and it potentially can break from being overheated. Okay, once you have a nice bead, and the edge, I'm gonna go through and smooth it out a little bit. Now I will flip it over and do the same thing. 
Now we're going to do the edges, which is the most complicated part of this whole thing. And again, we're just going to continue to tap the tip of our soldering iron and not run it because we don't want all of that solder to melt down the sides. And on some of these spots, there was enough runoff that I can just use that to tap. But if I need to, I can just pick up more. In whichever spot you're soldering, you're gonna wanna make sure it's as level as possible so the solder doesn't run down one side. solder on everything, I'm going to go back and just see if I can clean up any spots that look sort of lumpy or not great. And then for my final pass, I wait for it to cool down a little bit. And then whichever is the front, I'll just do one quick pass around just to make sure that there aren't any drips. I also like to take my finger and run to make sure there aren't any sharp spots, which can happen sometimes. And any like little burnt looking spots will get cleaned up when we wash this, so don't worry about this. And when I do my final pass, I go quick just to make sure there aren't any droplets down the side. I think that looks pretty good. Check the back, I'm gonna do one more pass. Around the back. For good measure. Okay, now for the final part is the jump ring. I'm going to pick up my jump ring. Like that. I think I'm also going to do a jump ring at the bottom so I can hang a little crystal off of it. Because I've been real into crystals lately. Flux your jump rings. Pick them up with your non-dominant hand. Get a little bit of solder. Hold your jump ring in place. And tap it. And this one went on crooked, so I'm going to unsolder and then reattach it. Same thing if you're adding jump rings anywhere else. Once you get the initial bead on your jump ring on, you're gonna wanna wait a second till it's a little bit cooler and solidifies and then you can tap more solder on just to strengthen it. Don't hold your soldering iron on too long or it will completely knock your jump ring off, which is a pain. And then I always like to go to the front to make sure it doesn't look funky. everything we did look over. Okay, so there's my soldered star. I have a jump ring on top. 
and one on bottom so I can hang a little crystal. So now that we're done, I'm gonna clean up this soldering station. I'm going to take my lead wipes, wipe everything down, wash my hands. I'm gonna wash my star in warm water. I'm gonna wait for it to cool down in warm water and a little bit of dish soap just to clean off all of the grime off of it. So I will see you back here in a second. Okay, our little star is all washed up and looking pretty. What I'm gonna do now is take, this is just a tea towel that I keep around for stained glass stuff. I'm gonna take my polish. And this step is optional. You don't have to do this if you don't want to, if you don't want to buy a bottle of polish. I'm just gonna take a little bit on the towel. I like to rub it in a little bit. And you're gonna take it and you're just gonna rub it all over your glass and your solder. Both sides and the edges. See, even though it looks super clean and I washed it, it still has a lot of gunk on it. So I'm gonna let this dry for a second and then I'm gonna come back and give it like a good scrub polish. Okay, now that that's dried for a couple minutes, we are going to polish her up. And I'm just taking my finger in the towel and then with, you know, a little bit of pressure, rubbing it along those solder seams. So this is gonna make it super, super shiny. It's also gonna protect it in the future from oxidizing in the air. And there is our finished, very, very shiny star with pressed flowers in it. I'm gonna throw a little chain and a little crystal on it and I will be back to show you the finished product. Okay, so here's how our finished little baby turned out. I think it's so pretty and I'm really tempted to keep it, but I'm not because I can't keep all of it. So this will be listed in my Etsy shop along with some of my other stained glass pieces and some other crafty little things that I make. I will link my shop below. It's also linked on my channel page. Again, if you like this, please give the video a thumbs up. If you try it, I'd love for you to tag me in your finished products. And I really hope that this video was helpful to you. And until next time, bye!